They're loose, and they're walking in the fire, and they have no hurt. The form of the forward is like the Son of God. How did they get loose? Somebody preached one night and said, That fire got so hot it burnt in cords. Don't believe a word of that. Don't believe a word of that. Well, Brother Danny, how do you think they got loose? I'll tell you how I believe they got loose. I believe Jesus said, Turn around, Shadrach. Turn around. I'm going to untie you. He just slipped in the ropes off of it. He said, Meshach, stand still. And I can just see him say, Jesus, we knew you was coming. We knew you was going to be here. We knew you would let us down. You know, there's a lot of times that the world wants to bind us up. But Jesus said, I come to loose you. The world will put binds on you that will hold you down. But Jesus said, loose him and let him go. Sister Mildred, when he loosed Lazarus out of that tomb, and he said, you bring him forth. And Lazarus come forth. And Lazarus come a-hopping forth, wrapped in those grave clothes. But the Word of God said, Jesus said, loose him and let him go. He don't want his children bound on the things of this world. He don't want you bound by drugs or alcohol. If you're a child of God tonight, you have no right to be bound by that garbage and that trash. I hear people say all the time, well, I I do this and I do that. Let me just tell you something. We don't need mind altering drugs in our body tonight that causes us to think crazy, that causes us to act silly, that causes us to do things that's not right. Jesus said, loose him and let him go. You know what he come for? He come to set you free. He come to loose you tonight and give you liberty, break all the bondage, break all the chains, and turn you free. When the Hebrew children walked out of that fire furnace and came up to meet the old king, they had no burn on them, they had no smell on them, and they wasn't bound one bit. Let me tell you, read on the rest of it, and you'll find that the king said, let the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, let him be our God tonight. I want you to know, friend, when you stand up for Jesus, that world will take notice of who you serve. They'll take notice of how you live. They'll take notice of where you go and what you don't do. Amen. Let me tell you, you might think that it ain't paid for you to live holy. You might think it ain't paid for you to live separated from this world, but that world will know who you are, not to do it to make you somebody. somebody. Amen. I can tell you I've been serving God for 36 and a half years tonight, and these people tonight think less of me than they never did. But that doesn't, that doesn't change one thing about me. You know what? I ain't, I ain't going to answer to people in this life. I'm going to answer to that God that sits high and looks low and says, that's my son. I want the singers and musicians to come tonight. I'm going to bring this message to a close. The fourth man in the fire. Has he ever been in the fire with your brother Roger? Has he ever been in the fire with you? Sure he has. A few years ago, maybe three or four years ago, I don't remember exactly how it was, Brother Roger was in the logwoods down here in the Halifax community, down there around Settle there. He was down in there and he, he was snaking out some trees and was pulling them out. Had his brother Mike down there, or I think it was Mike, wasn't it? It was happening. Brother Roger was out there and he, he, he cut this tree and his brother was going to snake it out. And so he tied the chain, tied the cable to it and started snaking it out of that hill, out from on that hill. And all of a sudden, it, it caught him and it trapped him. And, 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 the, and it, as he was pulling it up out of there, the boy had the scooter running. He couldn't hear Brother Roger. Brother Roger was a holler. That tree was a coming up on him. It had already come up on his leg. And all of a sudden, that scooter stopped just like that. I mean, it shut off just like that. I wonder who shut that scooter off. I looked at that scooter and I never have seen it. A time that I don't think Brother Mackey. I wonder how the Lord's angel just right up there and cut that thing off. All of a sudden, when his brother got off and seen that tree, if, if he went two, three, four more seconds, for the way that tree would have killed that man. He would be sitting on the front row. But you know what happened? I'll tell you what happened. The fourth man in the fire showed up and said, Oh, no, you don't. No, 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 you don't. I'm going to stop that skitter right there. It's going to stop. It ain't going no farther. I'm going to shut that thing down. Let me tell you something tonight, friend. He'll go through. I didn't mean to get y'all up here and preach a little bit more, but I, I shook a little bit more loose there. I just had to get it on now. He'll go through that fire with you, won't he, Brother Danny? He'll not leave you in the midst of it. He'll break you out of it, loose you, and let you go free. I'll tell you tonight, I want you to do one thing. I want you, when we give this altar call, and give an invitation, whether it's at your seat or wherever it's at, I want you to get into the altar somewhere and say, God, I'm going through the fire, and I need you to show up and show out. I need you to bring me through this thing. I need you to give me direction. Don't sell out to the world. Don't sell out to the things of this world. But you sell out to Jesus. I so 
sold out to him many years ago. And I've never regretted a mile. I've never regretted a drop of sweat that I've ever sweated for him. Now the job that I have ain't a popular job. And it's not a flamboyant job. But I'll tell you the benefits are out of this world. I've got a retirement fund laying up, brother. Every time I preach a sermon, I add a little more to my heavenly 401k. Every time I win a soul to Jesus, I get another place over yonder. You say, what are you working for? I ain't working my way for nothing. I'm praying my way through. I'm serving God daily. But one of these days, those benefits are going to start coming in. And I won't have to preach another sermon, but I'll sing forever. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's what I'm looking forward to. I won't preach another sermon. I won't pull. I won't tug. I won't preach another funeral. I won't go visit another heart patient or another cancer patient. I won't visit another soul. Amen. The ones I see there, they'll be healthy and they'll be whole. Would you stand tonight all over this building? Amen. We're going to give you an invitation.